Fred yeah. Noha. Yeah. Welcome to Vienna. Thank Glad to be here. Joining us. And I'd um, like to ask you some questions. Uh, first sure. of all, your family has been involved in the whiskey business for ages now. Yep. Would you agree that now is some kind of golden age for bourbon? Oh, absolutely. It's absolutely a renaissance. You know, bourbon has a had made a comeback from the you know in the 60s bourbon was very very strong uh, in the 70s there was a pretty big decline in sales of bourbon uh, my father released small batch bourbons in the 80s early 90s and it rekindled the fire under the bourbon category and people now are wanting to enjoy bourbon yeah. and so it's kind of uh, you know rekindled that fire under the category and made people enjoy bourbon and want to drink bourbon again what has beans uh, been doing uh, over the last years to prepare for this boom? have you expanded absolutely we've um, expanded our distilleries we've added fermentation vessels tanks uh, we expanded the Booker no plant adding another column steel uh, and fermentation uh, tanks We've also been building aging rack houses to accommodate the increased amount of barrels that we're making and aging. So yeah, we've, we've been in a big uh, expansion mode for the last several years. Yeah. So uh, you're uh, very uh, restrained with what you can do with, with barrels by the rules. For, right. Would you personally enjoy being a little less strict with the rules and having more opportunities to experiment? Well, I mean, we have to use a new barrel for bourbon, and I think if you were to use uh, used barrels, you would have a very difficult time getting the color mm -hmm. and the flavor that we like in bourbon in the time we do, because using a new barrel in our climate in Kentucky mm -hmm. gives us a distinct advantage to get the deep, dark color we get in bourbon and also the woodiness that comes from the barrel, yeah. and that's why if you change it, the big thing that I always say, everybody has to play by the same rules. That way there's no cheating or taking shortcuts. And that's what keeps bourbon, you know, consistent. Everybody has to play by the same rules, which that's fair. Mm -hmm. So uh, you cannot use a uh, used cask, but nope. you can use cask for finishing, can't you? Absolutely. You can finish in all different kinds of woods, mm -hmm. but you cannot, your initial aging must be in a brand new barrel. And this can be casks that have been used for rum or for, for sherry or something else before? For finishing you yeah. can. Okay. Your brand your first aging though must be in a brand new oak container. And I assume you have been experimenting with those casks. Oh yeah, we've finishes. we've done finishes in cognac casks, mm -hmm. we've done finishes in port wine barrels, we've done finishes in sherry butts. Uh, we've been looking at some rum barrels, uh, you know, which we're always looking to stretch the boundaries a little bit with our bourbons. A lot of creativity has been coming from the from the crafts of distillers that bloomed in, Amer in America the last few years. Is there something you think you can, as a big company, learn from them? And well, is there something they can learn from you? Well, we, you know, when I talk about craft distilling, I always say that, you know, Jacob Beam, who was my great, 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 great grandfather, he was a craft distiller in 1795, making maybe one barrel a day. Uh, the thing that, you know, we always said that anybody who's making whiskey, it is a craft, no matter what size of the distillery, you know, because you have to select the right grains, grind them to the specifications that makes your whiskey work, cook them, mash them, uh, convert the starches to sugar, have your yeast change the sugar to alcohol uh, select your barrel select your distillation strength uh, put it away how long do you age it what strength do you bottle at all those little things are crafty uh, I think situations that uh, there's a learning curve to making whiskey my family has had this learning curve for over 200 years I think uh, you know craft is everybody that makes whiskey is a craftsman so it's not really what size. I mean, we, we've got bourbons that we make in more limited quantities. Our small batch bourbons, for example, mm -hmm. that dad created in the 80s. You know, nobody really called them craft because they came from us. 
but they're just as crafty as what the little guys are making. And you know, I always say that if one of these little craft distillers family sticks with it for eight generations and over 220 years, they might be as big as Jim Beam down the road. I mean, that's the thing. You, you start small and you build the business. And that's what my family has done for over 200 years. But now touring here in Austria and Germany, you're bringing a new thing for us here. It's right. a single barrel Correct. from uh, Jim Beam. Right. Um, can you tell us a little bit how, how these barrels are selected? Who is responsible? Where do you source them? What we do, we go into the aging rock house and pick from aging Jim Beam barrels that are between five and six years old at various places within the rock house from various rock houses looking for unique flavors because the, the thing about single barrel bourbons is each barrel is bottled by itself there's no intermingling of fluids from two barrels you get distinct inconsistencies from barrel to barrel my father was never a fan of single barrel bourbons because he wanted consistent products all the time but as I've been traveling the world and talking to people there are fans that enjoy uh, the slight inconsistencies of single barrel bourbon so that's why we started doing single barrel products and that's where the Jim Beam single barrel has come from and we know that higher storage barrels have a different taste profile than middle storage barrels have a different taste profile than low storage barrels within these seven to nine story rack houses that we age in so we just go in there and we pull pull barrels sample them to make sure that everything's got a good balance and then bottle them up one barrel at a time okay so bringing them to uh, 95 proof is it for brand consistency or what's the reason behind it well for big thing consistency and flavor mm -hmm. so they're all 95 proof and so if you had bottles from different parts of the rock house you could see the slight inconsistencies if you took the ones from high storage down to lower proofs they would taste different than one from the bottom at a higher proof so everything's 95 proof and that's why they then you can find those slight inconsistencies within the single barrel program so a final question maybe uh, as you're slowly passing the torch to your son mm -hmm. uh, is there something you would tell him what, what's the most important thing for him to know not not so much from the professional side from but from being a master distiller as a personality oh I'd say treat people like you would want to be treated yourself if you were a fan uh, you know don't treat everybody with respect and dignity and listen to their stories I mean even if you're you're tired or you're wore out. I mean, these the fans are what make our products. And be in, keep in touch with them, you know, and then always sell products that you enjoy yourself. Nothing you'd be, you know, don't sell anything that you wouldn't be proud to serve to your best friend. And yeah. on the other hand, not to avoid at all costs? Taking shortcuts, uh, taking our legacy and not protecting it and doing things that the Beam family have never done. You know, start cutting quality on your grains coming in. Uh, maybe take short shortcuts on our yeast production to protect that family yeast strain and to utilize that. Because, you know, we're keeping the same strain of yeast alive that Jim Beam started right after Prohibition. And that's something we can say that nobody else in the industry can say. And we have eight generations now of family members that we've got that learning curve. Don't abandon what you learn from the family and think you're smarter than the seven generations that came before you. Fred No, thank you so much for your time and for your answers and enjoy your stay here in Vienna. Oh, I have, I've enjoyed it, thank you. Thanks for coming out.